there's corn, wheat, there's different types of wheat in a marketplace. Okay, they all have to have certain specs. Oats, rice, you can see them all there. All the, the staple foods, that's the unfortunate thing. I asked this before in the exam in the past, you know, about the, the ethics of trading futures and the impact that has on other people's everyday livelihoods. And if you can think of everything that's traded in the futures market, their food, it's corn, it's oats, rice, wheat, milk, cattle, other dairy, eggs, milk, sugar, and the list goes on. Okay, oil for keeping warm or for industry or whatever it is. Everything seems to be products that we need in terms of, especially for those poor countries. And if we start as speculators um, speculating on the price of any of those commodities, and we think we're going to make money because the price is going to rise, we start buying into these futures or options contracts. And that naturally, because of the net buy position, pushes those prices upward. Things get very expensive. And it, what, who it hits the hardest are the poor people who actually rely on these. And that's why a number of years ago, the Indian government decided to ban any exports of rice because it wanted to protect the, the most vulnerable in Indian society. Uh, also, a number of years ago, Italians went on mass protests and riots. I think it was about 12 years ago because the price of wheat went up and that made um, breads and pasta very expensive. Uh, and we saw these riots happening um, and people protesting on streets when certain commodities uh, get a bit out of hand. And you can see how something like this can affect uh, and why people might question the ethics of trading or speculating in futures markets. Um, soybeans. As well as that, it has uh, consequences for the likes of rainforests, for example, here um, with oil. If oil got very expensive, people look for alternatives and we think, oh yeah, this is great because with the alternatives, at least it's better for the planet. But what the alternative tends to be are agricultural based. So you look at the likes of corn or you look at palm oil and what happens when some climates are better for the likes of palm oil and like Borneo. So they destroy the Borneo rainforest and make it a more agriculture and it displaces a lot of the natural species and habitats in those rainforests, just again, because of profiteering. So I'm interested in the contract specifications, firstly, of soybeans. If I was doing this, I'd have it all ready for you, by the way. Contract units is 5,000 bushels. So the contract. How many months do you want to go with? We did six months in the last question. Let's do a four month, four month futures. Sorry, I shouldn't have put the 5,000 in there. Let me just X that for a moment. The contract size is 5,000 bushels. How many bushels of soybeans would you like to trade in the market here? Might be a good idea in this example to have a part contract where we have to round up or down. No 73,000 or something. Perfect, 73,000 bushels using four months soybean futures. You wanna get these futures. Let's go back in to the quotes. So let me put in some prices here. And these are $8.38, you'll see them, it looks like 838. Okay, so there's $8 a bushel, 24th of April. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna choose these three, August, September, and November. Okay, no October contracts. Okay, that's fine. August is 845, 844.20, and 846.20. I hope you're okay with this and it's not too slow for you. It's just that I want to show you where these questions are, where they're coming from, how we can relate to reality. And it will benefit you not even from a, an exam point of view, but just in terms of being able to read these and know what you're doing if you were ever to do something like this, or if you're currently curious and you want to do something about it now. Okay, so do you want to be a buyer or seller? If this question comes up and you're not told whether you're buying or selling, just whatever it is, look, that they received an order to buy. Let's do an order to sell instead. So do you want the price to have gone up or to have gone down? Yeah. Okay, so we don't know what the spot is, but it's going to be lower than one of these prices. Do you want to go into sevens or do you want to stay in the eights? 
845 or is it 845? Oh, sorry. Thanks very much. All $8. Okay. They're all, they're done at ticks. A lot of these um, prices, even though we don't deal with a half a cent, their the tick values are usually the four decimals. Okay. Three or four decimals. Um, so let's look at the solution. We want to find out the number of contracts. Um, we had suggested 73,000. Each contract is 5,000 bushels. So how many contracts have we got? 14.6. Okay. What do you want to do with that? Round it up. Okay. So I'm going to jump ahead here. This is going to be your 15 contracts. Okay. Look, you probably won't. I hope that's okay by saying, throwing, throwing in the 15 there, just as a reminder. 24th of April, we, if you remember, we sell futures. And the price of the contract that we chose, remember, it's the 24th of April. It's a four month contract. Four months from the 24th of April is going to take us up to kind of the a, end of all. more than likely you can take August. Um, you can take a September and also you can take a November. Okay, it's nothing stopping you from taking a November because remember with futures, you can close that position out at any time. So I could potentially have three correct answers in here. And it all depends on the trader. Okay, so does someone want to pay 845 this or this? Okay, September might be a better one because for some reason it's cheaper. And that might be your reason why you want to go with this one. Because remember, in normal markets, the further you go out in time, the higher the price should be. And this is in a way like an anomaly. It's actually lower. Okay, so it's, it's actually giving you money for holding on to the, um, the soybeans. So I would have gone for September, but let, look, if there's nothing wrong with August, I'm going to stick with August. So you're going to sell August futures. I might as well just put it in here. If you want to stick with September, put it in. 8.45. On the 24th of August, chances are that contract is still open. We have to close out. Please don't put in... Uh, so you need to close out by doing the opposite, which you buy your August futures again. Don't be put off by August in here when it's April, because that's what the futures contract you're doing. And let's see what I said. $8.25 was your closing futures price. So therefore, the price dropped by 20 cent. Was that a loss or a gain? You sold at 8.45, you bought it back at 8.25. That's a gain, isn't it? Sold it at a higher price, bought it back at the lower. A gain of 20 cent. What's our total gain? Well, we have 15 contracts and each one is 5,000 bushels of wheat and we can find out what we gained there. 15,000. 15, bang on 15,000. Okay, it's not the exact what you wanted. It's just that you rounded your contract up and for some reason it worked out for you because if you rounded down, you would have had a little less and then the 15,000. The opposite is the case, obviously, if the price of soybeans went up, if we had a, an 8.65, that's a loss of 20 cents because you sold at 8.45, you bought back at the higher 8.65, it's a loss of 20 cents and you'd have a loss of 15,000.